Hi, everybody. Uh, yesterday, I was talking with a brother about investments in inventions and innovations in science and technology right in the heart of Africa, taking place in Africa. And specifically, we focused on Nigeria because uh, primarily we are from Nigeria. I have observed that we do not have enough investments in inventions and innovations in the area of science and technology in Nigeria. And the question is why? Why is it so? There are individuals who can put in 20,000 Naira, 50,000 Naira, 100,000 Naira, 500,000 Naira, 2 million Naira, ETC, to fund research work in the era of science and technology. But they're not doing that. The question is why? We have individuals who are knowledgeable in the area of science and technology, who may have ideas about products that can add value to the lives of people in Nigeria, in Africa, and around the world. But there's one key thing holding them back, money. And sometimes they just need $50, $100, $300, just that, $300 seed money to start, to take that idea that is in their hearts, in their minds, and to transform it or convert it into a prototype prototype that you can see, you can touch, you can feel, you can handle. It may be a working prototype or a non-working prototype. Sometimes it's actually a working prototype. $300, $500, that's all they need. So, so why are they not getting that support? Why don't we have that culture that promotes investments in things like this? You may have a 19-year-old girl or a 25-year-old young man who has a product, but the product is in his mind. He just needs seed investments in order to bring that product into physical reality. Some people may spend $500 just for one weekend buying drinks, food, entertaining friends. People spend $1,000 $5,000, believe it or not, $10,000 just in one weekend in Nigeria. But they have never thought about putting money aside to assist individuals who have ideas about products, who have innovative, inventive ideas that can actually transform a nation. Yes, it's good to have a good time. However, why not stop and think? Instead of putting or spending $5,000 
US dollars on a weekend, having a good time with friends, family. Why not spend $3,000 and put $2,000 aside? Invest it in the life of a young girl, a young boy. That $2,000, you put it aside, can lead to the creation of a product that can transform the Nigerian economy. Think about that for a minute. Think about that for a minute, please. Yes, we have investors in Nigeria, angel investors, but they are few and far between as far as I know, and clearly we're not seeing a lot of products coming out of Nigeria. This is a fact. This is 2018 and so far it is a recorded fact. How can we change these things? These are very important questions, my dear brothers and sisters. We have people who are inventors, innovators. They are there, but they're not getting the much needed support. People always say the government, the government. Why do we have this mentality that the government will do everything? No government can do everything. However, yes, the government has a role to play. We need the right people in leadership that would inspire a nation, that would wake up the collective consciousness of a people that would challenge or place a great challenge on us as, as a collective in order for us as a nation to be major, 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 a major player in the area of the production of man-made goods and services. So yes, the government is key and a very important role to play. Where are the leaders with the right mindset that would inspire Nigerians to commit time, talents, energy, money, and other resources to see in that technology companies are birthed, they shine, they, they thrive in Nigeria. Let us look at it as an existential, existential problem. It is an existential problem. It's a matter of life and death. The other day, Obama, President Obama, while in office, did not allow for military equipment to be sold to Nigeria to fight Boko Haram, a terrorist group. He, he and his team or some of his elected officials, the elected officials who supported his, his, his uh, stand, we are of the opinion that the Nigerian army had human rights abuses. The point I'm trying to make is this. The fight against terrorism was hindered, hampered by the refusal of the Obama administration, for whatever reasons, to sell military equipment to the Nigerian government. Yes, we appreciate the United States of America and other countries who provide military equipment. That is appreciated. And yes, we will continue or we should continue to do business with them in that area. However, let us ask ourselves this question. Honestly, do you have to wait for another country to provide military equipment to you? 
in order to, to ensure safety, peace, and security within your borders? Why can't you provide or create these military equipments? Do you think along those lines? We need more people in leadership and followership, the general public, to think along these lines. Very important. Why can't you provide these equipment? Why, not, why can you not put systems and structures in place to see that you in your own country are creating, making, providing military equipment in order to ensure peace, security, and safety within your borders? What stops you from doing it? If the United States can do it, why can't you do it? If Britain can do it, if Russia can do it, why can you not do it? You have two brains just like they have. Let us ask these questions. It is an existential problem. So for if whatever reasons, a country you rely on for military equipment refuse to send you or to sell to you these equipment, you're in trouble. Stop and think about that for a minute. It's important. It is a matter of life and death. If there's an outbreak, a disease outbreak in Nigeria, and for whatever reasons, countries in other parts of the world who may have the medicine or the treatment for that disease choose not to send you or sell to you the drugs, the vaccines, and what, what not needed to take care of that problem, what do you do? This is an existential problem. It's a matter of life and death. Whatever the reasons may be, logistics, whatever, political, whatever, whatever reasons, they do not or they refuse to sell to you these medicines. Or it takes a long time for these medicines to get to you. What do you do? Once again, we appreciate them and we admire that they can produce these medicines. And bless your heart, we, we should work with them, partner with them, trade with them, do business with them, buy from them. They are our brothers and sisters and they are appreciated. However, the question remains, why can we not produce medic medicines as well? not just produce the medicines, but also preserve them, make these medicines in such a way that they are well preserved and can last a good, reasonable number of years. So storage comes in play. Mind you, in Nigeria, we have medicines, take note. We got people who are making medicines. But again, They've not been, for the most part, they've not been able to build their companies to such a level where they can provide more than enough for, every, for, for the entire population and even export to other parts of the world. In some cases, we have some treatments to all kinds of sicknesses and diseases. Treatment discovered in Nigeria. But guess what? They're not readily available to the masses. Why? It takes capital to do so. It takes a good structure in place to do so. It takes proper organization and management to do so. These are some key problems we have. Why? Even to this day, have we not corrected these problems? It's not that we don't even have individuals in Nigeria who have provided solutions to all kinds of problems. But it's not enough to have such people. All the things have to be in place. Proper organization, proper structure, proper support systems or support base 
proper funding, adequate funding. This is what we're talking about. The government has a role to play. Also, the general public has a role to play. Let us search our hearts. We have people who got money who can turn things around for a scientist or a technologist who can turn things around for a brother or a sister who has come up with a cure to a sickness or disease, but they're not, they're not doing that. Why are they not doing that? Imagine a, a man in Nigeria would pay 200,000 US dollars. Take note, my dear, 200,000 US dollars given to a musician in the United States to fly to Nigeria to sing and entertain people for his son's 12th birthday. Happening in Nigeria. You would get a musician from the United States, pay him 200,000 US dollars, have him come to Nigeria to sing, to spend maybe two or three hours in your house, entertain guests, celebrating your son's 12th birthday. The same you will not, will not, will not put $5,000 aside, just $5,000 aside to support, to invest in the work of a fellow Nigerian who has a cure to a sickness or a disease or who has a product, it's in his mind or in our mind, but the individual wants to bring it out to fruition physically. A product that would add value. Take note of the word value. Add value to the lives of millions of people all over Nigeria and all around the world, while at the same time taking the economy of Nigeria from point A to point B, while at the same time bringing in billions, billions, take notes, of United States dollars into the Nigerian economy as a result of that one product that has come into fruition, that is adding value to the lives of people within Nigeria, within our borders, and outside our borders in Africa, and outside the African borders around the world, adding so much value, bringing so much utility, 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 satisfaction, value, support, help, sustenance, to the lives of people around the world. You got 200 United States dollars to get a musician to come from the United States to perform, spend two hours or three hours with your family and friends in celebration of the 12th birthday of your son, 200,000 United States dollars. But you, my dear friend, will not commit $10,000 or $20,000 to the work of a brother or a sister who may be in your community. Think about that for a minute. Something is wrong. My God. Something is wrong. We have to encourage ourselves. We have to sit down and think differently. This is an existential problem, my dear. It is. It is a matter of life and death. We got to see it that way from that perspective and see that things change for the good of the black man and, of course, for the good of the planet. How can you just be consuming? What are you giving back? You have people from different parts of the world who make things that add value to your lives. Look at the smartphone in your hands. 
that is value added to your life already in all areas, in so many different areas of your life, your business, your business life, your entertainment life, your educational life, EDC, even your spiritual life. <laughs> you can go to your smartphone and easily read or watch videos with issues of and about godliness. With your smartphone, the business you are involved in or the work you are involved in or the firm or company that you run is able to run smoothly. Is able to get some added benefits because you have a smartphone. Somebody or some people did that. They spent time and effort. Money invested. Systems and structures put in place to ensure a smooth organizational structure. This is why you have your smartphone, my dear. Let us think. This is important. It is an existential problem. Malaria fever has been wrecking havoc in Nigeria for years upon years upon years upon years. Thousands of people, maybe millions, have died over the years. People are dying today as we speak because of malaria fever. We got mosquitoes. God bless mosquitoes. They, 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 they are part of the, what you may call the ecosystem, the food chain. Of course, there are benefits of every insect, every insect or animal created. But we got a problem of mosquito bites and malaria fever. <laughs> you can tap into the benefits of mosquitoes and use it to add value to the, to the planet. Fair enough. However, this is what I'm going to right now. Malaria wrecking havoc. Where's the cure? You are in Nigeria. Are you waiting for somebody from outside Nigeria to come to you with a cure to malaria? We have the cure in Nigeria. Even long ago, our ancestors, they've come up with a cure to malaria. But why has it not been mass produced? Where is the organization, the management, the structure in place to see that this cure that we already have in Nigeria, we have it. Call it herbal medicine, traditional African medicine, call it whatever you want to call it. We have the cure to malaria, to prevent malaria and or to treat malaria. We have it. Where is the cure in our, in, our, in our medicine stores, in our pharmacies? Where is it? Made in Nigeria, boldly written. Where is it? Well packaged, well preserved. It has a life, having a lifespan of maybe five years, expiration date, maybe in two years' time or five years' time. Where is it? When will we think and do things differently? Where are the leaders in government? Who would inspire a nation and challenge a people and say, let's make it happen, Nigeria. Where are the masses to support these individuals who have the cure? You can spend 100,000 Naira on a weekend, but you will not commit 20,000 Naira to such people. You can spend 20 million naira on a burial ceremony. Have you ever thought about spending 17 million naira instead of 20 and then commit 3 million to research and innovate research into inventions and innovations in science and technology? Have you ever considered that? Your next door neighbor or a brother in a neighboring state may have the cure to malaria. Have you ever considered putting that three million naira into that? 
So why are you going to spend 20 million for a burial ceremony when you can comfortably spend 15 or 17 and still have a good burial ceremony? And then take that 3 million or 5 million and give to that brother, invest. Oh, you, you may not even give him what I'm giving you as a gift. You may give him as a gift, but you don't have to. You can say, I'm partnering with you. I'm going to be an angel investor. I'm going to put this 3 million or 5 million naira into the work you're doing because you're working to come up with a cure to malaria. Or you even have the cure already. I'm going to support you. So we're going to have a good system in place to see that this cure that you have will be mass produced and put successfully in the hands of millions of Nigerians all over Nigeria and millions of people all over Africa and around the world and we bring an end to this malaria problem. I'm going to do just that, my dear. Not until we get more people like this with this mindset. We're not going anywhere as Nigerians or as Nigeria as a country. This is an existential problem. It's a problem of life and death. We can add so much value to lives. We can improve on the quality of life of our people if we understand these things. We can promote peace, security of the land. We can cause wealth, so much wealth to be created. We can make the land to be one of the greatest economies on the planet if we get this right. Inventions, innovations in science and technology. Creativity in the area of science and technology. Of course, creativity in other areas are important as well in the arts. We need investments in that as well. That's another area. My God. And there are many other areas as well. We have to begin to think differently on how we spend money, on how we move money around in Nigeria. My God. This is an existential problem. Do you want respect? You are demanding people to respect you from all over the world. You, you don't, you're demanding in vain, sweetheart. You want respect, command respect. You command respect by your life's work. You command respect by what you bring to the table. You command respect by the value you add to your own lives, to the lives of people in your community, to the lives of people in your country, to the lives of people around the world. That is how you command respect. You don't demand respect, sweetheart. This is planet Earth. Stop demanding for respect, black man. Stop demanding for respect, Nigerians. Stop demanding for, res for respect. Command respect. And you command respect by the value you add to lives. You command respect by the works that you do and people see. That is how, that is how, that is how, that is how you command respect. That is how you command respect, people. That is how you command respect. Enough is enough. Stop demanding for respect. Command it. Command it. Command it. I call on you to command it. Command it. What is the value? How much value are you adding to lives around the world? You keep demanding for respect. You keep demanding for respect. Stop it. Command it. Command it by the value you add. Command it by the utility you bring to the table, the utility you bring to lives. Command it. I beseech you, command it. Command it by the quality of life you, you bring to the table. Command it. Command it by creating a higher quality of life for yourself and, the, and, the, and for others. Command it. And science and technology has a great role to play in this area. Enough is enough. When are you going to wake up? I got to go. Being emotional right now. Take care.